Okay, so this is promissory estoppel and restitution. Restatement 90 is the promise reasonably inducing action or forbearance. So promissory estoppel is restatement 90, and it is an elements test. There are four elements. It needs to be a promise, which the promise soar should reasonably expect to induce action or forbearance on the part of the promisee or a third person. Um, the promise doesn't need to be super clear. It can be implied with conduct, and this is Harvey V. Dow about the mobile home where they built a bunch of things. Um, so that's one. Promise, um, which would expect to induce action or forbearance. Two, which does induce such action and forbearance. Three, is binding if injustice can be avoided only by the enforcement of the promise. And four, remedy is granted for breach may be limited as justice so requires. And note, the requirement is often referred to as detrimental reliance, um, but vagueness of that reliance does not necessarily mean no injustice. So courts definitely have some wiggle room here. So on an exam, you're looking for, it was is there a promise? Is there reliance? Or is the promise supported by consideration? Because then you'd have a contract. If it's charitable giving, some courts will say no reliance is necessary, but some do not. So on an exam, you're going to go both ways. That like, and it might be that there was no, re there was no action. So there was no reliance, but in some courts will say it's fine. Some will not. So our hypo for promissory estoppel is Grandpa Joe knows that Billy is considering going to college in New York where he has recently been admitted but is reluctant to do so because of the high price of housing. Grandpa therefore promises Billy that he will give him $10,000 towards a year of rent in New York. Excited, Billy searches for housing in New York and places a deposit on for $4,000 in an apartment. However, before Billy enrolls in college, Grandpa calls him and says, Billy, I'm so sorry, but the market has taken a massive dive and I won't be able to give you the $10,000. So what will happen? Um, Grandpa's promise to Billy is binding so long as he should have reasonably anticipated Billy would put down a deposit on an apartment. So if Billy's five and they went and put it out right then, probably not, but if he already knew he got in, and blah, 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 then yes, it was reasonable that that would induce um, reliance. So Restatement 90, comment B, says character of reliance protected, and that's the principle of this section is flexible. So reliance is the promisor is affected only by reliance, which he does or should foresee. Billy being five, Billy being 18. And the enforcement must be necessary to avoid injustice. Um, satisfaction of reliance may depend on a number of things. So the reasonableness of the promisee's reliance on its definite and substantial character in relation to the remedy sought, on the formality with which the promise is made, on the extent to which the evidentiary cautionary deterrent channeling functions of form are met by the commercial setting or otherwise, on the extent of which such other policies as the enforcement of the bargains and the prevention of unjust enrichment are relevant. Um, and then again, charitable giving, not all, not all courts follow this, uh, but section two says a charitable subscription or a marriage settlement is binding under subsection one without proof that the promise induced action or forbearance. And then the restatement 90 comment B says character of reliance is protected, charitable giving. The force of particular factors varies in different types of cases. Thus, reliance need not be of substantial character in charitable subscription cases, but must in cases of firm offers and guarantees. Okay, and for that, we have King v. Uh, trustees of Boston University. Um, and then footnote four says, a lot and I don't think you're gonna need that okay so that's promissory estoppel and then let's talk about promises in a commercial context the effects of pre-acceptance reliance 
So this is Cats v. Danny Dare, which is a great name, right? Um, promise of pension is enforceable. Um, so Cats and Danny were, Danny was like a brother-in-law and they wanted him to retire and they kept giving him offers and offers and offers and um, finally, finally he did because he could work part-time and then part-time and then because he was working somewhere else part-time, they wanted him to come back, and he said no. And so they cut his pension, and they were like, mm, "Is was this a promise? Because it wasn't bargained for before his years of service. So, promise. Um, the letter they wrote was evidence of the promise, detrimental reliance on the promise. Um, consideration is relinquishing a legal right, which, of course, doesn't generally happen in promissory estoppel. But detrimental detrimental reliance is a lower bar not a legal right it's a lower bar it's reliance so he resigned from his position um cat still had his job when he relied on the promise and we simply don't know if um cats uh, if danny danny dare um would have been able to get up the courage to fire him so saying he would have been fired anyway is not true and then taking action that you are not required to f perform, he wasn't required to quit. So injustice can only be avoided by enforcement of the promise. If there truly were detrimental reliance, then enforcing the promise avoids injustice. So um, the tricky part with that is you can't, like, consideration can't be for past things. So so that's why it was a promise and not, and not a contract. So the letter was a promise, not a contract. And then option contracts revisited. Um, you know, I'm going to stop there because I can't live stream anymore because YouTube is not my friend and it's going to take a while to upload. So I'm going to do them like a lot smaller pieces than I have been. So there's going to be a lot of videos. 